Hi everyone, this is Pam Coey. It did take an entire month to pack up everything from the Rocky Mountain Grange and prepare everything for my new space and it was really scary. I didn't know if I could do it. You know how that is when you have to move from one place to another. It's a big job. As I show you this video today, I came up with 14 tips that range from everything on how to store things, how to label things, you know, tips that I realized I had thought about as I prepared the new studio. So I hope that you enjoy these top tips. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel because it just makes me feel like you're out there. Thanks so much. I promised you I would give you a tour of my brand new studio and it's still kind of a work in progress so excuse the little messes but uh, I figured I better take this video now before I really start to launch into my work uh, as you can see it, it looks very different from where I was before but I'm feeling really good about it it feels like home which is where it is so no big surprise there but I'm gonna point out a couple tips that uh, I kind of came upon or thought about a lot before I moved in. My floor plan was kind of my way of easing myself out of the Grange and into this new spot. I'm a big believer in floor plans. It, it allows you to move things around and I always do it to scale, which is kind of a trick in itself, but I was able to measure all the things I had at the Grange and see what would fit, what wouldn't fit. And actually I kind of like this arrangement better and I'll explain why. So let me turn my camera around. I first wanted to talk to you a little bit about my floor plan. Um, this is where I just walked in the door. And you know, my first uh, attempt at this floor plan, I, I needed to measure everything at the Grange, you know, all the furniture and cabinets and tables and things like that. And I really, the, the one thing I was really hoping that I would do in this studio was not have as many things on the floor. So the first thing I had to do was decrease the number of tables that I have out on the floor. In this particular floor plan, I have a table here, 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 and that's my flat file. There's another table, and those tables are there just to show that they could be there, but they don't have to be out all the time. So I want more floor space. And the little black dots represent where I wanted my electrical outlets. Notice that I definitely wanted to have a central one here to kind of allow me to have my filming table here, but I also wanted to have one here and I wanted to have one here. Uh, normally you have outlets just along the wall, but one thing that I just felt like was happening at the Grange was all of my outlets were along the wall. And the problem was that because the Grange was the size that it was, I had extension cords coming from the walls to the central portion and I was tripping over them. You know, I have carts, they couldn't roll over those cords very well. So I figured in this space, I wanted to really see if it was possible for me to work on improving the number of cords because I have a lot of things on rolling carts. So let me show you my rolling carts. Now granted, these are not as organized as they could be, but as I moved them from the Grange, I basically just took everything off and put them into boxes and threw them back on the cart. This is my tool cart. As you can see, anything that is used for acrylic and oils, as far as brushes go and scraping tools and things like that are on this cart. So in my mind, I can say, is it a tool? And if it is, I know to look on this cart. I've got brayers and these are handy little things that I picked up from Ikea. At the time I picked them up, I didn't quite know where they would go. But as you can see, this one hangs from the side of the rolling cart. And I really like that because if I ever need a brayer, I know where to find them. And this one has gloves that are both used. So I really like to be able to reuse them. And then on the bottom are my bigger tools. So big rolls of paper and my gigantic compass. I've got a big brush, you know, odds and ends, just things that are really large. Got a square, my fly swatter. And these are my really long brushes, which I love. You know, you've seen me use them in videos. They're still, they still have the stretchy tape on them, but I found that they are so long that they rest on the handle. So that would be a little tip that I have, you know, I used to have them in a jar or a glass jar like this, and they're so tall. You can see how tall they are. And it's just not, you know, from a balance standpoint, it's not very well balanced. You can tip it over really easily. So I like to put them right here. And if you have a rolling cart or anything like that, you know, works really well. I know that not everybody has this kind of an arrangement, but these are the freestanding walls that are actually 
cabinets and I was able to bring four here and I only chose the ones that open. So like this one here is for all of my encaustic. Everything is still boxed up because I just had to get it into the cabinet and then kind of move on. So what I decided to do was hang my collage paper uh, by value. Now those who are in my pro membership know that I'm a big believer in working really hard on seeing color in terms of value. So if I stand back here, what I did was I took out my, I love these collage papers, so they could go on my flat file, right? And that's where they usually live. But I thought, you know, they're really almost too nice to be stuck in drawers and I wanna see them when I walk in because they're so pretty. So you can see from this end, I've got my lighter values and then I move into the high saturation mid-tone range and then I end on the dark. So for those of you in my pro membership group, you know, we've done a lot of exercises. Um, they've been calling it my value boot camp, and it truly was. I think they've come out of that value boot camp really understanding the value and how important it is. So um, yeah, so that I just wanted to show you that, that that's kind of a tip I had is um, the way that I hung these up was first I, you know, separated them by value, but then look at these gigantic clips. They're jumbo, like here's my hand, and you can see they're gigantic, and they really are strong. And they've got these nice big holes, so I was able to like clamp a lot of papers. There are a lot of papers here, and they can hold a lot. So what I like about that is, you know, you take it off of its screw up there, and then you lay it on a flat surface, you rummage around, find what you want, clamp it, and put it right back up again. And for me, I like that because I love to see them hanging when I first walk in. When you first walk in, I have this big easel and the nice thing about this easel, I was visiting my son in Portland and they have this Columbia Art Supply Store and this particular easel, you can actually move it so that it goes like flat. And so like if you had paint dripping, you could actually tilt it and move it and you know allow that paint to really move around. That's why I thought it was kind of cool. Here's my bookshelf with um, favorite books. I discovered these shelves, which are, they look like floating shelves. They're just white, but they can be painted and they probably will be painted at some point. I just got three of them and you can kind of see how deep they are. They're static, can't move them, but what I like is, you know, there's like this edge here. So I figured it's a good place to put either just flat panels like this, not too big, or they could be framed, you know, as long as you kind of tilt them and they don't fall off. But I don't know, this is like two and a half inches in depth. So then uh, the other cool thing was I needed to really figure out what I wanted to do with my walls. These walls are half inch ply. I'm a big believer in plywood walls because you don't have to worry about, if you have drywall, you have to worry about the studs holding your heavy panels. And I have some panels that are quite large so I wanted to go with ply and all that. So I've got windows behind you that got covered up. That's part of the preparation for getting the studio ready. There are many things that had to be done. It was not at all ready. So notice I've got a ventilation fan up there, still untested. I don't know if it's quite strong enough, but I have a door I can open as well. That's for work with encaustic, work with oil. And I plan to uh, put my table right underneath that fan if I'm working with something that really requires good ventilation. I put three rows of screws here and uh, my tallest work, 48 by 48, would go on the top screw. And then you see the 36 by 36 inches are on the middle level. And then the smaller work can go on the lowest bank of screws. I like the versatility. They're about 10 inches apart. And notice they all line up. I'll probably paint them just so they don't stick out so much. This is a, a cradle panel. It was painted the same color as the wall. And then all these little screws were measured, you know, in a grid. And these are to uh, hang my six by six inch smaller work. But what I like about this is that you can see how you can hang a lot of six by six inch work. And I intend to use this in the process of getting ready for my show. It's actually from, my show is gonna be at the Moscow Contemporary. Uh, it's in Idaho and it's going to be from September to end of December. So I will be working on filling this up with work. Uh, because I work in four mediums and one of them is encaustic, which requires a lot of plugged in appliances, a lot of heat generating appliances, I wanted to show you, uh, the, and I've pointed this out at the Grange, but I again went for these outlets that have that little line going to the left. You can see there, these are 20 amp outlets 
and they prevent me from blowing a fuse. They're safer and it's something that I kind of wanted to duplicate. It was also with the Grange. One of the things that I like about this arrangement here is that like there are these little back rooms. This one was actually meant to be probably a bathroom, but as you can see, it's not going to be a bathroom. I've decided to put the steel sheet here for my, my encaustic tins. This is kind of my encaustic storage area. I'll show you on the other side, there's this other little storage area and my husband made these shelves and I, I measured these boxes here. They're banker's boxes and they're labeled and he made them so that they fit banker's boxes. And that would be another tip is that if you have a certain kind of storage box and if you measure it, you know, you can make like this, this wall would have been worthless um, the way it was before. So we tore out these really weird shallow shelves that were in here. It was like a garden room and he just made some bigger shelves and that was nice. In my corner here, you know, making use of every little space you have. And I'm sure most of you already do that. Got these really tall tubes full of canvas and I, you know, they're huge, they're heavy, they're tall. So I stick them in the corner. I know where they are. I can get to them. And then I put all of my electric frying pans associated with encaustic here. You can see how I move them. I, instead of like taking the whole thing apart, I just put some plastic wrap over the entire surface. That would be another tip because you don't have to take everything apart. Didn't have to box everything up. And then this I got from Costco. This is in the former studio. It's just a large rack. It's on wheels. I'm a big believer in carts on wheels. So here's another big cart. And you know, one of the things I, I like about this studio that I didn't really have in the other one was floor space, but I had to try really hard to reserve some floor space because pretty soon you've got all kinds of things on the floor. I didn't want to have quite as much camera equipment. I certainly didn't want to have as many six foot tables. So there's my table in the corner for my computer. And then the big beast, I call it, um, is the one with all the things that I had to color code. And I'm happy to report that due to my color coding, as you can see here, everything works, which I'm very grateful for. I had a lot of concerns about moving all of this equipment and that it would actually plug in and work. This will be my main area where I do videotaping of work that's flat. You can see I've got my camera lights here, flat files. Here's another little tip is big labels that you can really see uh, very quickly. On this wall, I didn't put as many screws into the wall, just one row because this will be for the bigger work. And you know, I've got some work that's finished, some that's work in progress, but that little cart will follow me as I go from painting to painting. I was talking about how I like, wanted to get things up off the floor. So you can see that I've got, you know, these rolls of paper. Some of these are glassine. Some of them are just newsprint and they're just on these uh, paper cutters, but they have been mounted between the studs and that has made like a lot of room. Um, these used to be on the floor. Again, more things to trip over and they're heavy. You have to lift them if you go from place to place. So if you have any open studs like this um, as a tip, you could mount them like that. I had a really bad experience one time with a gallery that had my encaustic work and they were moving from one location to the other and they didn't realize how delicate encaustic work is. So what they did was they took some of my very large encaustics and put them into a cold uh, storage area in the winter. And when they brought it out, uh, there was a lot of damage. In fact, all the work got damaged. So I learned the hard way. So did the gallery. This is like a back area and it's just been walled in with these doors that open. If you remember from the Grange, I had these very same art storage racks and they're on wheels. They're really handy. These things roll out and the thing about it is that it's going to be a temperature controlled area so that in the winter time nothing will freeze and you know if you're an encaustic artist you just kind of need to protect the work that you have that's finished um, keep it inside your house just keep it from huge temperature fluctuations either too cold or too hot because that is really not good for your work <laughs> and what happens if it gets too cold is it can crack and fall off the surface even if you use gesso and in the summertime sure beeswax is not going to melt until you get to 150 or 180 but what happens is the um, if you were shipping work and it sat in the back of a ups truck it could actually melt right off the surface i had a freestanding cabinet at the grange and i had this hanging system that i've shown in a different video we dissembled to the freestanding wall and we just took off this one side that had the Ikea hanging rack on it and 
we then screwed it into the inside of this door. So I didn't have to measure all this again. So that's the storage area. Thanks for your interest. I welcome your comments as always. And please like this video and subscribe to my channel and click on the little notification bell if you want to be notified when I have a brand new video. I hope to be very productive in the studio and creating all kinds of crazy new things. And I hope you're doing well and happy painting. Bye now.